So this should be a pretty simple thing to do what we're going to do today. Basically I have my solar panel system with all the stuff. I unplugged it right now because of what we're going to do is I'm going to install a charge controller. So how I had this before is I actually had to connect and disconnect the battery whenever I would charge it and go back in with the meter to check it to make sure it doesn't overcharge which isn't really that much of a problem. We barely make any power with this at all, but it still could have the possibility of to overcharge, especially since right now it's late evening, the sun is facing directly on the solar panels and generating the most power at this time. So I think it's good to right now install the solar charge regulator. It's basically a charge controller the cheapest kind that you can get at Hubber Freight Tools. A lot of this is basically a Hubber Freight Tool stock setup without buying the kit. So we just buy the charge controller and the panels and hook everything together. It's 7 amps at 100 watts maximum. Of course 100 watts. I have a 15 watt panel, a 5 watt panel, and 1.5 watt panel. The panels are not at the correct angles, correct facing the sun at the right. They're supposed to face towards the equator or something, I don't know, but they're probably not even producing the 21 watts that they would be rated for altogether. So we do have room to expand with this as well. Even though it does look like these wires are kind of thin, we can install our battery here our solar panels here and the load here. Interestingly, one thing that I don't get about this thing is it has one of these connectors for the battery, one of these connectors again for the load, but for for the, I'm sorry, for is one of these connectors again for the solar panel and for the load it just has some wires which even though they're strategically placed alongside each other not to short out it wouldn't be that hard you could just do that and that would drain all your power and probably break your thing so i'm probably gonna have to put a connector on that when i do but for right now i'll just tape it up or something so how we're gonna do this is we have our little hub here the output of the hub is going to go to the solar side one thing that they don't have at the solar is an extender cable for one of these. How we could have it now is it would just be like that, and that's not very useful at all. So we're going to have to make our own extender cable using whatever junk that I have. The hub did come with this, however. This is an open-ended lead. As you can see, it just ends in two wires. It's a very thick wire. So presumably this handles much more power than the charge controller could ever handle. And for our thing, we're just going to have these are some clip these are some clip leads which normally go to a battery and then they and then in our connector. So how we have to do this is since they're going to opposite sides, that we have to wire it like this. So it faces out as an extender because this is designed to take power from here and put it out through there. This is designed to also take power from the connector and put it out through here. So that's why it has to do this crossover. For right now, I'm just gonna tape this over in masking tape and just hook it up to get everything working. Painting tape is a good way to not use duct tape, especially if this is a very, very, very temporary thing that I'm going to take out whenever I can make or buy a better connector. So as bad as this may be, the wires are insulated. Well, 
not really, but they were supposed to be insulated. And also we do have our connector thing. So how I think I'm gonna have it is the output of this goes to our our solar panel connector. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect the solar panel to this and then put it to the charge controller and then that can go to the battery. For right now, since we're just doing this for testing, I'm just going to put the 15 watt panel because that's probably the only one that's going to make enough power to even turn on the light. So we do get the charging light. Also, the high voltage light. There's no battery connected. I think you're supposed to connect the battery first, but whatever. Our clip leads, these are going to go to the battery. Short wires are really becoming a problem with these things. I need to get some more. So the battery will connect here. And it should give us a light. Okay, so it doesn't... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this here so it doesn't cause stress on the wires. Okay, so now what the solar panel connected is charging. Again, it's charging just off of the 15 watt panel. But, I have the other panel so I might as well connect them up too. Okay, so here's our thing. As you can see, it is much better than what we previously had just because there is a charge controller here and I can just leave it as it is for now and the battery will be maintained by the charger. Obviously, I don't have a load on the system right now. What I'm probably going to do is put a car outlet port on this thing and power some things that way. Also, as I mentioned before, I do have some other stuff that I could be powering. As I mentioned before, I do have some other stuff that I could be powering with this, one of which includes this 12 volt fan thing. Very easy to power. I could just get another one of these connectors and string some wire out. Also, I could power lights, the inverter, uh, I'll try to power a computer. I, I have a little tablet thing that might run off of this continuously for a while. It's just powered by 5 volts and I could get a step down converter from that. But otherwise I don't think I'm going to be doing very much with this system. I don't really want to expand it right now because I don't really want to make that much of a mess. But that's it for now.